Let's try this again. Good morning, St. Tim's. Good morning. My name is Jacob Nastris, and on behalf of all of us here at St. Timothy's, we welcome you to our in-person and online worship service. We're grateful to have you here celebrating with us today. A few notes before we begin our worship. First, we'd like to welcome our guest preacher today, Sarah Trone Garriott. Thank you for joining us. Our second offering partner for April is St. Timothy's Faith and Grace Garden. We hope you consider supporting our garden with your second offerings this month. We have included a second offering baggie inside your bulletin, or you may contribute online on our website giving page. If you are visiting us today, we would like to invite you to complete a welcome card, which is found on the table with the service bulletins. If any of you would like to share any prayer concerns with us, you can use the back of the same card. Please place your cards in the offering plate before you depart this evening. Lastly, thank you for joining us with your prayers and presence. And with that, let's begin our service.
bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen. May we find courage here. Courage to follow our call. Courage to live out our faith. May we find hope here. Hope for a better world. Hope that refuses to let us go. May we find truth here. Truth that lives in the sacred community. Truth that lives in the angel's world. May we find all that we seek. There are very few things as powerful as a group of people that admits they are not perfect and asks for grace as they grow. Imagine what our world might be like if every institution had such a weekly rhythm. Friends, we can light the way. Let us be brave in our truth-telling and honest in our confession, for we will always be met by a grace. Join me in the prayer of confession. Jesus of Nazareth, we admit that often we tuck our faith into our pockets, hiding in a place of comfort, rather than proudly declaring, yes, we are Christian, yes, we believe, yes, this faith has changed me. We are so afraid of offending others or embarrassing ourselves that we have established rules, no faith at the dinner table, no faith in politics, no faith with strangers. Forgive us for whispering when we could be singing. Forgive us for staying quiet when we could be part of rewriting the narrative. We want to be brave. We want to pour out perfume over your feet. These things we pray. Amen. Family of faith, hear this good news. Even in our silence, God loves us. Even in our fear or shame, God chooses us. Even when we sin, God wraps us in grace. You are free to be bold, to be brazen, to be exactly who God called you to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Holy God, sometimes my waking is a prayer. Sometimes the song I have stuck in my head, rumbling on around on repeat, is a prayer. Sometimes the way I talk to the children and the way I hug the dog is a prayer. Sometimes the way I take my phone out to get a picture of the sunset or of the people I love, that is a prayer. Other times, prayer is moments like this, heads bowed, eyes closed, hearts quiet for just a moment. And in all of it, I trust you to hear me. Help me to hear you in return. Gratefully we pray, amen. amen. Let us pray together for all of the very young children who are out in the parish hall with children living the word. Loving Jesus, who told, told us that whoever welcomes a child welcomes, welcomes Jesus himself. Bless these children, guide us as we encourage them in your ways so that we might become disciples who are your hands and feet and voice in this world. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. God who carved a path for us to walk through the sea who saved us from the chariots and horses and all the warriors and armies, says this to us. Don't get stuck on the way things were. Don't rehearse them over and over again in your head. I am about to do something completely new. It's happening all around you. Can you see it? I'm making roads in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The animals who run wild will bow down to me, even the ostriches and the coyotes. I give my people in the desert water to drink. They are people I formed for myself so that I might hear their praise. The word of the Lord. Be Please join me in reading the psalm as found in your bulletin. We'll read it responsibly. 
We thought we'd died and gone to heaven when we saw God had put Zion back together. We were so happy we couldn't stop laughing, and when we weren't laughing, we were singing. Everyone was telling each other how good God was. Bring us back to health, God. Build up the places that were torn down. Those of us who cried all those many long nights will wake up with joy in our hearts for sure. And those who went out into the field while they were crying will come back home happy. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone thinks they are something special, let me tell you, I am even more special. I have done everything right. I am one of the people of Israel, from the tribe of Benjamin, born to the right people. I am a Pharisee, someone who studies God's law. I was the most enthusiastic anti-Christian there was and no one could pit any crimes against me. But whatever I have done right, whatever reward I have done for doing the right things, none of that compares to knowing Jesus Christ. I have lost everything from my former life for his sake, but those riches are garbage to me now. Based on faith, not whatever good I do or whatever great person I think I am, I am considered holy in God's eyes because I know Christ and the power of his new life. I may get myself in all kinds of trouble because I talk about him all the time, but it's worth it. I know I will be with him in the resurrection. I have a long way to go. I keep working at it though. Jesus Christ has made me his own. It doesn't get any better than that. Dear friends, I haven't made it on my own. I have done this only with God's help. I forgot what I have left behind and push forward to what lies ahead, which is where Christ Jesus is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the twelfth chapter. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this, 
not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus answered, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In last week's parable of the prodigal son, we heard about an extravagant, reckless spender doing inappropriate things. I'm not talking about the prodigal son. I'm talking about that father. Giving that foolish, undeserving younger son his money, his love, his forgiveness. Again and again, despite that son having been ungrateful, despite him having squandered the other gifts he'd been given. And then that father was criticized for showing this extravagant love by his bitter, miserly, older son. Sound familiar? Today again, we have an extravagant, reckless spender doing inappropriate things. This time it's Mary extravagantly using up all that costly and rare perfume, recklessly pouring all of it out on the floor when just a little dab would have done it. Inappropriately, touching Jesus' feet, letting down her hair, making a mess of herself right there in front of everyone. Extravagant, reckless, inappropriate behavior. These are signs of the kingdom of God. Signs of the kind of extravagant, reckless, and inappropriate love that God has for us. The love of God in Jesus Christ. Mary has seen it. A few days earlier, the last time Jesus showed up in Bethany, when he was three days too late to save her brother Lazarus from dying. Mary's sister Martha did not understand and doubted what was possible. Mary herself was as angry as she could be at Jesus for letting her down. Jesus ignored the crowd's critical comments. Jesus pushed past Martha's plea, just leave Lazarus be. Don't raise a stink by opening the tomb. Jesus should have known better about drawing attention to himself the kind of trouble it would make, the kind of danger raising Lazarus would put him in. But he did it anyway. And he showed them all what was possible in the kingdom of God. Showed them what this kingdom looked like. And now, Mary can't help but respond in kind with her own extravagant, reckless, inappropriate gift. And just like always, the critics and the cynics and the naysayers start in. Like Judas, they sound sensible on the surface. This valuable perfume could be used to do something more sensible. What a missed opportunity. What a waste. But we know that Judas's common sense words are truly coming from a place of selfishness. His motivation is in his lack of trust. Judas is always looking for a way to hedge his bets. He won't let himself go all in with Jesus, but keeps holding back, holding on to a few extra coins in his pocket, holding on to his fear that Jesus is not going to be enough, trying to make his own way, scared that when it comes to the real world, the ways of Jesus will not cut it. But in contrast to Judas, here is Mary. She's not afraid anymore of what people will think, so she acts without hesitation. There is always enough, and she doesn't hold anything back. 
Jesus' gift of life has set her free to be selfless. And even though her gift is small in comparison, it reflects back that extravagant, reckless, inappropriate gift of new life that she has received in Jesus. This is what worship is all about. Reflecting back that extravagant gift we've been given, this is what a community of faith is all about. Practicing living a life of extravagant gratitude together. All of it meant to go beyond common sense. Jumping over the boundaries, pushing past what the world has determined is acceptable or prudent. It's extravagant to have a building devoted just to the act of worship. It's extravagant to be together, listening, serving, singing, for an hour or two or three every week, when there's certainly other things that we could or should be doing. It may seem reckless to set aside a portion of our hard-earned money and let it be used for things that don't benefit us personally, don't benefit our people or even our community, to give it away, sometimes far away, to help others. People we will never know um, in ways we may never see, or never even get a thank you for. It may feel inappropriate to gather and share a meal with strangers, with people who we might not always see to eye, eye to eye with, or sometimes even like that much. And then to call them all family. To do seem these things that seem foolish and silly and strange together, to confess our weakness out loud, to ask for help, to sing and speak and laugh and sometimes weep in front of others. But these moments of extravagant, reckless, inappropriate behavior mirrors the abandon with which God loves us. And when we see that love reflected in the community around us, it makes us bold to keep going. Because if God's love in Jesus has no limit, there is no such thing as too extravagant, too reckless, too inappropriate. We cannot go too far in expressing our gratitude. So my question is, where next? What greater expression of thanksgiving is God calling you to as part of this community? What extravagance awaits us as this congregation. Not instead of, but in addition to. Not rather than, but above and beyond what you've done so far. Which leads us back to that curious answer Jesus gives at the end of the passage. You will always have the poor with you. Jesus is quoting Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11 a passage that everyone at that table would have known. It begins by saying, There will, however, be no one in need among you, because the Lord is sure to bless you. In the land the Lord your God is giving you as a possession to occupy. This passage reminds the people that God has given everything they need for all people to have what they need. And then the passage reminds that all people will have what they need if no one is holding back, if no one is being stingy, if no one hesitates or resists when another calls out in need. If the people live lives of gratitude, always remembering anything they have is a gift from God and a gift meant for all people, not just some, then all people will have what they need because God has provided enough. The people sitting at that table with Jesus would remember the bigger picture of the passage that that line came from, and they would also know that Jesus has not quoted the entire verse, but has left a little blank for them to fill in themselves. Since there will never cease to be some in need on the earth, I therefore command you, open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land. 
Listen up, Judas. When it comes to discipleship, it is and instead of or. It is both and not one or the other. It is together rather than us and them. It is Mary's extravagant gift and extravagantly giving to the poor because God has given all we need to do it all, truly. Amen. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. If you've been hanging out with us during Lent, you know that we have been using what's on your insert in your bulletin for our prayers of the people. And we have been using the Anglican prayer beads that Mary made for us. So I encourage you to get those out if you have them. And if you don't, if you need a set, if you would let us know, we have some in the back that we can give to you. Okay. We'll start with the cross that's at the base, and then we'll move through the beads. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May we find all that we seek. And we are seeking the name of God. And moving to the invitatory bead, return to God with all your heart. Our source of grace and mercy. Cruciform bead one. We pray for the world, for those at war, for the oppressed, for captives, for refugees, and especially for our neighbors in Ukraine who are suffering and dying. How do we pray for peace from half a world away? God of endless compassion, transform our prayers from words into bridges that span the distances between us, uniting our hearts with yours. <laughs> Every time we step in our cars, may we remember all who are having to flee. May our besieged sisters and brothers be drawn into the arms of the suffering Christ, and may our cry be heard as one voice, ringing out from every corner of the earth. God. moving through the seven glass beads. Open our hearts, Lord. 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 And fill us with mercy. Moving to cruciform bead two. We pray for guidance, Jesus, in the ways of your peace that we may seek and serve your beloved as you would. We pray this day for all who have a song they cannot sing, for all who have a burden they cannot bear. For all who live in for all who wander homeless and cannot return, for those who are sick and for those who tend them, for those who wait for loved ones and wait in vain, for those who live in hunger and for those who shall share their bread. 
for those who are misunderstood and for those who misunderstand. For those who are captives and for those who are captive. For those whose words of love are locked within their hearts and for those who yearn to hear those words. Have mercy upon these, O God. We move to the seven glass beads. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill it with your grace and mercy. Moving to cruciform bead three. I am dumbfounded by the sheer persistence of a winter rose that blooms on the coldest of days. When the rest of the world The audacity to stand so tall, to decorate the world with color, to be the only one brave enough to bloom. Maybe it's similar to pouring perfume on the feet of Jesus, shocking and beautiful at the same time. Instead, I say, thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for the word. And I walk home and pray. God, amen. Make me better. And moving through the glass beads, open our hearts, Lord, and fill them with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill them with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord, and fill them with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Cruciform bead number four. For all who have asked for our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, for those who are suffering are lost, are lonely, and for those who have died. We pray especially today for Lou, for, Brad, for, for Mary, for Tom. For all who are challenged in their relationships. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray especially today for this gathering, for Sarah. Moving into week four glass beads. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Open our hearts, Lord. And fill us with your grace and mercy. Moving back to cruciform bead one, we pray for the church, for the body of Christ, to remember that we are Christ's hands and feet and voice in this world, and to seek the courage and wisdom to act as Christ's disciples. Ours are the eyes through which Jesus looks with compassion on this world. Ours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Ours are the hands through which he blesses the entire world. Ours are the hands, ours are the feet, ours are the eyes, and we are his body. And now moving back to the invitatory bead, 
Blessed be the God of grace and mercy. Amen. And down to the cross. May the almighty and merciful Lord bless us and keep us. Amen. As Jacob reminded us at the beginning of our service, our second offering partner this month is our Faith and Grace Garden. Um, and is Tim here? There's Tim. Tim, you want to come up and talk to us a little bit about what's going on? Sure. This is Tim Goldman. Well, thank you, Jeannie, and good morning to you all. Well, it's been a wonderful morning for me so far. Our Christian formation programs resumed today after a hiatus for, during the pandemic. And this morning, I was again a teacher at our preschool, the Children's Ark. I was a storyteller in the Children's Ark, which means I got to tell our three and five-year-olds a story this morning called The Light, or how Jesus is the light of the world and Jesus is in our hearts. Now the light of Christ shines forth in our hearts out to everyone and everything around us we, told, we talked about. And as I talked to you about our Faith and Grace Garden, it feels to me like I'm still continuing that story that we started at the Children's Ark. For surely the light of Christ pours forth into our community through our garden ministry. Last year was a wonderful year for the Faith and Grace Garden. We grew and donated over 20,000 pounds of fresh organic fruits and vegetables to feed the local hungry. Now I think that 20,000 pounds is a very interesting number. The Iowa State Extension Service told me a few years ago that 20,000 pounds of produce was the most you could hope to grow from a one acre garden like ours. If the weather was good and you had enough health and you had all the breaks, 20,000 pounds was, was fantastic. So we really did a great job next, uh, last year. But Mark Marshall, who leads our garden ministry, says his goal is to grow and donate 25,000 pounds of produce <laughs> this year. Now Mark's aware of what the Iowa State Extension said. So where did Mark get this 25,000 pound number? It seems to defy reason to me. And why I don't uh, know where Mark gets all his enthusiasm, I did read that as of March 31, the government is curtailing the SNAP program, meaning that indigent people will see their food assistance drop by $95 to $200 per month starting this month. All the while, as you know, we're experiencing soaring food prices. I also read that our local food pantries are scrambling right now as they do not know how to make up the food shortfall. Now, I don't know where Mark got his 25,000 pound goal for this year, but let's all be the light of Christ in our community and do all we can to help him reach the goal. I can tell you that in 2022, our growing season is already off to a great start. We began planting in March, and this is the earliest that I can remember that we've ever started planting. So far, we've planted 4,000 onions. I'd like to give special thanks to Karen Peters and Lynn Pettit, who along with other garden volunteers in our community, have been helping us plant onions on Thursday mornings from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., weather permitting. If you'd like to join us on our Thursday morning planting team, please see either Mark or I after the service, and we can answer your questions and help get you started. This year, I'm also happy to report that we're off to a very good start in the garden greenhouse. So far, Mark and volunteers have planted about 30,000 vegetable starts in the greenhouse. And by vegetable starts, I'm talking about those little peppers and tomatoes and things that you start to see in the stores now. These vegetable plants will be set out in our garden, but the majority of them will be given away again, as we did last year. We give them to refugee farmers and to 18 other donation gardens like ours. So it's another way that our garden ministry can make a tremendous contribution. One of our biggest goals this year is to hire, hire an assistant gardener 
to help Mark in the garden when we just, at times when we don't just have volunteers because the garden's really getting busy enough that it needs people in there tending it all the time. So this person would help Mark when we don't have enough volunteers. We hope to have an assistant gardener work in the garden for 20 hours a week from mid-May through September. In budgetary terms, that's about a $6,600 expense in our budget. So as always, we appreciate your continued financial support. We're also working hard to do some other fundraising for our assistant gardener. Yesterday and today, from 11.30 to 12.30, we're having a plant giveaway in the greenhouse. We're giving away surplus cool weather vegetable starts, which are like uh, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and so forth. Yesterday, we received over $200 in donations, so please stop by to the garden after uh, the greenhouse after church, even if you're not a gardener, it'd be a great chance to show you around the ministry and let you see what they're doing, and I bet that Mark's up there right now, which is the reason he's not here. I plan to kind of give him trouble about that 25,000 uh, pound goal, but I can't do it. He's not here. We'll have another plant giveaway in the greenhouse on Saturday and Sunday, May 7th and 8th, and then we'll give away warm weather vegetable starts, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and the like. Also, if your employer has a corporate giving program, consider introducing the Faith and Grace Garden to them. We'd be happy to help by making a presentation or filling out a grant or whatever, but we're looking for partners that want to maybe have their employees spend time in the garden, get to know this ministry, help us financially. So if your employer does that, please let me know. We'd love to work with them. So we are off to a great start this year in the Faith and Grace Garden, and with your help and generous financial support, I'm sure we'll be able to feed more hungry people than ever. Thank you. So Sarah put the call to us this morning to give recklessly and extravagantly. So. Let's prove her right, okay? Today is the first Sunday of April and we're going to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. So if you have a birthday or anniversary in April, could you please just stand in your pew? Very nice. So if you'll say the prayer with me that's printed in the bulletin. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up in the call and in their hearts. May the peace that passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. Let us with gladness present the offering and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing to give thanks to you always, Creator God, because you have made the world in all its complexity. You have given humanity abundant good things, yet you have also given us the capacity for dark choices and anxiety. You have provided us with paths leading to wisdom through deprivation and suffering. And you have shown us, through the incarnation of your love in Jesus Christ, the way of reconciliation through letting go of self and material concerns, seeking first the compassionate realm of God. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of the heavens, and with all the creatures of the earth, who forever sing their hymns to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Ever living God, you have created the world out of nothingness. You are present in both the darkness and the light. You have created humanity from the dust of the earth and have given us the ability to choose between good and evil. You have called your prophets and champions from among the lowly. You have formed your people through wanderings in the desert and through exile in foreign lands. In your creative thirst to be known to us, you have entered into our struggles, coming among us in the human person of Jesus the Christ. He was conceived amid scandal born in want, raised in obscurity. With us, he embraces hunger and thirst, temptation, rejection, doubt, grief, suffering, and death. And the night before he died, he took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Now in this sacred rite of thanksgiving and praise, we celebrate the saving work of Jesus. For in him the cross, the instrument of torture and death, has been transformed into the sign of reconciliation and abundant life. Recalling his life, his teaching, his death and resurrection, we offer these gifts of bread and wine. Spirit of compassion, breathe upon them now making them for us the very body and blood of your incarnate love, the Christ. And breathe your spirit into us, so that having partaken of this sacramental meal in faith, we may serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and may dwell forever in the joy of communion with you. All this we ask through the Christ, who is the human and cosmic incarnation of your love. Christ, in the unity of your Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, creator God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We are one bread, one body. 
Jesus has always been one to invite. He said, drop your nets and follow me. He said, let the little children come. He said, stand up from your mat. You are healed. Jesus has always been one to invite, and that has not changed. So friends, you are invited to this table, each and every one of us, with our doubts, our fears, our scars, our joys, our dreams, our hopes, our questions. We are invited to God's table. And here we will be met. Here we will be fed. Here we are given a taste of an expansive life that is full to the brim with love, overflowing with joy. So come, not because you must, but because you can. Come, you are invited. This table is for you. We come to the table to share in God's gifts for us. Please be seated.
please stand. You're able for the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Ascend us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world. Amen. As you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. And may it change your life. And with the blessing of God Almighty, our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, may you go in peace, full to the brim. Amen. from this place now confident enough to rewrite the narrative, to loudly advocate for love that knows no bounds. We will with God's help. And now let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.